What's up guys, it's Wasabi and I'm back with another review. Today we have the new keyboard sent from Mons Geek, but as always with the content on this channel, these are my thoughts, personal opinions, and experiences with the product. And as always, my reviews are focused on reviewing the product itself and not directly comparing one product against another. And today we have the M1 WSPHE by Mons Geek. Now here's a quick look at the packaging because that's what you pay for too. Inside the box, you have a layer of tape to tape mod, and of course you get the M1 WSPHE. Looking very slick in this black case colorway with these gradient keycaps. You get this coiled cable, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless USB receiver, Teflon pads to do a false brake mod, an Allen key, a keycap puller and switch puller, and an instruction manual. And yep, that's pretty much all that's included inside the box. And before we go any further, I'm going to manage some expectations here real quick. Monskeek is a sister brand of Echo, which is why you would find a lot of similarities in the design and function with their products. This is their first wireless Hall Effect keyboard that features an 8000Hz polling rate with a USB connection and it even has Bluetooth 5.0 that lets you pair up to 3 devices. And this is currently going for just about $160 on their website. The design of this keyboard takes on a minimalistic look with a solid matte black aluminum case and a very cool gradient design set of shine true keycaps with legends on the side. It's a very clean look and I do like the thick frame on this 75% layout. This comes with double shot PPT keycaps and are in the OEM profile which are rather comfortable to type on. It looks as solid as it feels and the gold accents on the side match well with this black colorway. With this keyboard, the build quality is great. Materials and the aluminum case feel expensive and this board has quite a hefty weight to it. This comes in at just about 2 kilograms. So what's going on on the inside? Well, taking this keyboard apart is very simple. All you need to do is open up the case using the Allen key that comes with the packaging. However, you will need a screwdriver of your own if you wish to open up the PCB module. This keyboard board has a gasket mount and plate mounted stabilizers to minimize keycap wobble. You get the Echo Cream yellow magnetic switches. The encoder with the knob has been upgraded over the previous version of the M1 with changes to the height and internal materials for a more stable structure and solid feel. This features an aluminum plate, a pour on foam pad right in the middle, IXPE switch pad, of course the PCBA, a 3mm pour on case foam. It includes a VHB insulator just for safety in the unlikely case of a short circuit as this has a pretty hefty rechargeable battery. The aluminum bottom case and having gold inserts like these are pretty interesting if they sold them in different colorways. I think this would give the keyboard another layer of customization for owners to personalize. So as you can tell, this is a 75% layout with a dedicated control knob. The default setting for the control knob switches between two modes with each press, volume control and RGB brightness, but you can reassign different functions to it. Connectivity wise, this board can be used in three different ways. Wired mode with the USB-C cable that it comes with, Bluetooth 5.0 and that lets you connect up to 3 devices and the wireless 2.4 GHz connection with the wireless USB receiver. There is a tiny switch right under the caps key and that's where you toggle between Windows wired mode, Windows wireless mode and the Mac wireless mode. So using this board in wireless mode, I do feel some input lag but not so much that it's unusable but if you plan to use this for competitive gaming, I'd recommend using it with the wired mode. I did experience some instances where my keys do not register and I hope that this is something that they can fix with a firmware update. Now, I was hoping that I could use a wireless Hall Effect keyboard for all the games that I play, but I could feel the difference in speed between wired and wireless. It's a little too noticeable for me, which got me using it wired pretty much most of the time. About the battery life performance, this keyboard has a 6000 mAh battery that is claimed to last about 150 days if you use it 4 hours a day without RGBs and about 8 days 4 hours a day with RGBs on. The M1 WSPHE comes fitted with Echo Creep Yellow Magnetic Switches. Pretty good magnetic switches if you do a lot of typing. Total travel of 4mm and an operating force of 50 gram force plus minus 10. Adjustable actuation from 4mm all the way down to 0.1. Rapid trigger setting between 2.5 to 0.1mm for individual keys. Additionally, if you have mechanical switches you would like to use with this keyboard, you can purchase a PCB that is compatible with this case that works with mechanical switches. My experience gaming on this keyboard was alright, not the fastest feeling Hall Effect keyboard but most of the features, rapid trigger, adjustable actuation and dynamic keystroke work as they should. However, using this keyboard with the 2.4GHz wireless connection felt slower than using it wired. And that's quite a bummer because I was looking to experience high performance rapid trigger on a wireless connection. It's probably something to do with the software and I hope that they continue to work on improving the wireless performance. But that aside, using the keyboard with a wired connection is great but under the condition 
recommend that I don't use it on the absolute lowest trigger points with rapid trigger. Setting rapid trigger to 0.1 millimeters on both the upstroke and downstroke kept cutting off my directional movement, but I found that setting it to 0.2 millimeters on the upstroke was a much better experience. Now, this is something I experienced with another similar keyboard and that had a slightly different PCBA, so I got a feeling that this might be because of the switches. On a wired connection, this keyboard uses 8000 hertz pulling rate, but with my experience, I do not notice much of a difference compared to other Hoi Fat keyboards with 1000 hertz pulling rate. At this point in time, with the technology we are at, I personally wouldn't see 8000 hertz as a huge selling point, but I would say that it's good to have moving forward. Typing experience is good, it's more on the stiffer side if that's something that you enjoy. Even with a gasket mount, it feels rather stiff because of the aluminum plate and along with all the foam and padding in the case. Monsky does sell M1 plates on the website, but as of now, those M1 plates are not compatible with their Hoi Fat keyboards, including this one. The software of this keyboard is pretty much what you'll find on Echo's keyboards if you're familiar with that. There are a lot of features here which can come off a little intimidating and can be a little confusing for new users. Especially with this interface and how everything is opened up, it does feel like there's a lot to take in. This keyboard is raw mode and it's a little odd that on the app it says light speed mode but it's actually raw mode on the website. This is a mode to increase the response rate for optimal performance. Unfortunately, I have yet to experience it because it doesn't seem to work since I got it, but they are actively working on an update. Of course, with this keyboard, there's adjustable actuation and rapid trigger. So right here is where you can configure the settings to your preference. I think what bothers me the most is that you cannot select more than one key at a time. And this can be rather frustrating if you want to apply the settings only to WASD, for example. But being restricted to adjusting one key at a time takes a while to get all your individual keys set the way you want it. Mod tab function lets you set two functions between pressing and holding down a key. Dynamic keystroke, which allows you to set up to four different functions for four different distances, two on the upstroke and two on the downstroke with a single key press. And this keyboard has what they call a toggle key function, which allows assigned keys to trigger continuously with a single key press, which I would imagine would be useful in games where you need to spam a single key. Something that will bother people who plan to mainly use this keyboard wirelessly is that the software does not recognize your device when you're connected on wireless mode. So the only way you can readjust your settings is by plugging in the cable. I have to say the RGB look really good with these side-facing shine through keycaps and there are a lot of preset RGB effects to choose from. It is quite a unique look with the minimalistic design of this keyboard. I just wish the RGB shine through a little brighter though because even at maximum brightness, legends still look pretty dim to me. So what are some things I like about this keyboard? The minimalistic look of this keyboard may not be for everyone but I personally think it looks really good and it's easy to match with most PC peripherals. I think that this colorway matches my Zowie GSR RSE mousepad perfectly. For the price, you get an incredibly solid build and that's where this keyboard really shines. Build quality and materials used for this keyboard are really good. Connectivity options, though I personally would only use this keyboard wired for maximum performance, there are people out there who would find Bluetooth and wireless connectivity convenient on their setup. Now what are some things I feel can be improved with this keyboard? Wireless performance isn't very impressive for me. It could be a software issue that's causing the keys not to register. But because of that and the input lag that I feel compared to using it wired, I would only use this with a cable because of the games that I play. For casual use and casual gaming is fine, but moving forward, gamers would expect absolute high performance and stability when it comes to wireless connectivity on their keyboard, and I think that this can be something to improve on. The software could use a refresh for a modern day keyboard and it looks pretty outdated with a few annoying things that keep you on the app longer than you should. Now I hope they are looking into it because the software is part and parcel of the Hoi Fat keyboard experience. But the good thing about software is that most things can be fixed with future updates. The coil cable is too short for my setup layout because of where I position my system. It's actually right next to me on my right. The coil cable now looks like a noodle which ruins the purpose and aesthetic 
aesthetics of having a cord cable on my desk. But with more conventional setup layouts, having your system on your desk or under it should be just fine. The switch location isn't very accessible. I understand that they were going for an absolute clean look with the design of this keyboard, which is great. But I'd imagine it would be rather frustrating for someone who switches between different connectivity modes day to day. So final thoughts, materials, design and build of the M1W SPHE is absolutely fantastic. But how it performs wirelessly for gaming is a bit of a letdown, at least for me. This feels like a keyboard that is trying to cramp in as many features as possible before perfecting the one thing that makes a Hall Effect keyboard desirable, and that is its performance. But perhaps such a statement comes from looking at this as a high-performance gaming keyboard first and productivity keyboard second. Because to me, the M1W SPHE is more of a productivity keyboard that has the features and capabilities of a Hall Effect gaming keyboard. And I really hope that Monskeek will continue to improve this keyboard with updates because I honestly feel that this has a lot of potential. For the people who would spend more time with this keyboard doing productivity work on their computer, maybe they have a multi-device setup and occasionally play games, I think this keyboard is brilliant. The M1W SPHE is a good step in the right direction that offers incredibly good quality build to the gaming market. But personally, as a gamer and the games that I play, it just needs a little more polishing with the performance and features, and I'm sure that this keyboard will appeal to more than just the casual gaming crowd. If this is a keyboard you'd like to check out, there are three color options available. Black, which is what we have today, silver, and purple, which adds a little pop to your setup if that's what you're looking for. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And I guess I'll see you in the next one.